Look at him! Ah! It's so cool! <laughs> You're talking to me. <laughs> Look at him! Look at him! Hello, so it's day 22 of the UK's lockdown and I'm doing these daily videos as a way to document, you know, how life has been in these weird times and also just to keep you company. And this video I'm really excited to be shooting these intros and outros for because I've been working on it for days and it has been so much fun and it's such a silly little thing, right? But it's been really fun, it's kept me sane working on it and um, it is this. <laughs> I have, out of my old clothes, just made a little, uh, just made a little Umbreon plushie. I literally just finished it, finished it just now. I put the eyes on, so I'm really excited. <laughs> so um, it was actually really, surprisingly really easy, right? I'm not a sewer. I'm not like that kind of crafty person. Um, it just, I made it out of old clothes that I just had laying around and uh, you can use a pattern as well to know all the shapes you've got to cut out. And I'm gonna show you my sort of journey of making it and um, yeah, <laughs> let's get down to it. So as I may or may not have mentioned in the intro, I used a pattern that I found on the internet to make this plushie and I'll leave a description, I'll leave a link in the description to that pattern. It was super useful, it made this really really easy but um, unfortunately I didn't have a way of printing it out because my printer is broke. I don't know why we're still having it around, I really need to throw that printer out or at the very least make the printer leave. So if you don't have a printer, you can get creative like me in a dark room with some paper and tape it to a screen. And um, I found it easier to make the room dark and you can sort of, you know, <laughs> pretend you're an evil scientist working on your latest creation. But um, yeah, you can just trace the pattern out. I used a kind of, this still works pretty well and I used a thick kind of like sketchbook card-ish stock, thicker than regular paper, but not insane. Now, um, I wanted to keep the pieces of this pattern so I could use them again, use them again in the future. Use them again in the future. So what I did is I kind of reformatted it so that all of the little notes and instructions that were on the pattern were inside the pieces so that then I could keep them and reference them later. You might want to do that, you might not, but I found it helpful seeing as I'd be keeping it. Um, yeah, and so then I used a different colored, pen. once I'd got the pattern down, right, I used different colored pens where I drew the patterns where the pieces would join each other, if that makes sense. So like I would draw these lines to explain that this piece would attach to this piece and where it would attach, and also how many of each piece I would need. Because there's no point making multiple templates if you're just gonna repeat it or flip it or whatever. And then you cut the patterns out of the piece of paper. And um, I went back and forth doing this between like, you know, with a pair of scissors and a craft knife. And you know, it's kind of really like, it's horses for courses. What I really just, used whatever was most appropriate for the time. So I wouldn't say use a craft knife definitively or use scissors, like I just used what was making it easier at the time. Just make sure, you know, if you're using a craft knife, you've got a chopping board or something underneath like I have. Um, just really don't, do not worry about getting these like exact, you know, by the millimeter, cause that really doesn't matter. This is, f it's for fun, not perfection. Like you're not gonna <laughs> make a shop quality toy at the end. So it's just most fun to just let go of it being perfect and just, it's gonna be what it is right and the sewing so forgiving but anyway now what I wasn't gonna do was buy fabric for this um, experiment because I not only am not qualified enough to justify buying some fabric for it that would have been silly of me I um, have a bag of clothes that um, I was going to throw out because a lot of them are just damaged or they have holes in and so they're not really um, like, you know, the, these shorts in particular are completely busted. You can see that they've got a massive hole all the way through the crotch because I think I've ripped them once and then like the rip just got worse and worse and worse until it became ridiculous. And this hoodie as well, it's got a busted zip so it doesn't work, it can't be worn. And maybe that, you know, I like the color of that. That's kind of like an Espeon type thing, isn't it? Maybe I'll make an Espeon after I've finished this Umbreon, but yeah. Now, what I did was I um, took all of the pieces of fabric and I, um, you know, cut them at the seams and stuff like that to get as many big flat pieces of fabric as I could. 
I started out thinking that I would make a camouflage pattern Umbreon, but it really didn't work out because I couldn't get enough of that fabric, um, you know, flat, enough big flat pieces of that fabric off of the um, shorts that I was using. It's got massive pockets as well, so just like picking the pockets off was, oh, I was a nightmare, it was taking ages. I knew that I wasn't gonna have enough fabric, so I just sort of gave up on that. And I picked um, this shirt, which had this really adorable, awesome kind of like parrot, birds of paradise type pattern that I really liked. And I thought maybe, you know, in the finished product, you might be able to see some of the, some of the birds. And so I thought that'd be cool. And so then next you, um, yeah, once you've got those big flat pieces of fabric, you trace around all of the pieces of the pattern enough times so that you end up with all the fabric pieces that you're going to need. Now remember if there are two that need to be made of the same bit, like the sides of the body or the face or something like that, you need to mirror them. So flip the template because if you have to flip the fabric later, then you're going to have the inside edge on the outside and nobody wants that. And once you've got all of those pieces of fabric cut out, it's, um, yeah, you can sort of start getting ready to um, clip them together and sew them together, really. I didn't have any pins or anything special like that, so what I just used was um, bulldog clips, actually. Like, I bulldog clipped the fabric together just to hold it, and then that's where I would um, run the stitching. And, um, yeah, it was really, you know, it takes longer than you think it's gonna, but you can just use a running stitch, like the simplest, simplest stitch, and it's fine. If you're using a running stitch, then maybe keep them a bit small, just so you know it's super, uh, you know, super secure and everything like that. But I, and when you've sewn the pieces together, um, what I did was I used a skewer to push down the stuffing into the pieces. And the stuffing I used was, we've got a old duvet. So what I've done is I'm just sort of like shredding pieces off of the interior of that old duvet because I know that like when all of this is over we were planning on replacing that old duvet anyway because we only get it out so that one of us can use it if we have guests and the guests can have a nice new duvet but it's you know we figured we were going to replace it anyway. Oh you can see here I've finished the head and I'm already super super excited about it. Like, <laughs> you can, just finishing the head, I can already see that it's coming together and what it's gonna look like. It got me so, so excited. And so you need to um, sort of be conscious of the shape of the body as well as you're stuffing it, because in some places you might need it to have more filling than others. It's, you know, you are kind of in some, it might be because as well I was using something that wasn't really intended to be toy stuffing, but it took weird shapes in places. Again, I was aiming for fun, not perfect, so, I didn't care that some bits were a bit knobbly, some bits were a bit loose and empty, but um, yeah, it's just something to be conscious of, I guess. When all the pieces were um, filled, well, when the head and the body piece were stuffed and filled, I actually, um, this was against the instructions on the template that I linked, but I just found this the easiest way to do it, and I um, sealed up the body and then attached the um, head with some loose stitches, and this is just done by, you know, not pulling them tight, um, running the stitches in and out of the head and body all the way around and then at the end then you kind of wiggle the thread and pull it and it kind of tightened it up and pulled the head onto it. I'm sure you'll find a better instruction for that somewhere online. Um, it just sort of, you know, was a, I was winging it a little bit, it worked. Um, <laughs> and then afterwards I just maybe put a couple of more stitches in it just to help it along, make it like a little bit more fixed. It really took me a while to decide where I was gonna put the head to make it look most realistic. But anyway, once the um, head and shoulders were on, then I just sort of stitched on all of the detailing to the fabric. And then um, the last thing that was left for me to do was the uh, eyes. Hey, so this is like day four of this project or something like that. I don't know, I've been doing it pretty on and off. But now I'm wondering how to do the eyes, right? Like, <laughs> I really don't know how I'm going to directly sew eyes onto it. Like all of the tutorials I could find online for like embroidering eyes or whatever, they needed sewing machines, I'm not about that. I don't have one that's too difficult. I need it to be like an easy way to do it. So I think, I don't know. My my main idea is that like I have some, blah, 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 have some craft glue so if I can stick on some cleanly cut fabric eyes, then I could neatly stitch around them like I have done for the little features like on his head. Like I could maybe try and make sure that it was a bit neater than that. Um, because their eyes, you know, try and match the 
colour and everything. But that seems like the nicest way to do it, is like to stick on some fabric and <laughs> like put a, I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out, I'm gonna figure it out. But also to make it easier to stitch on, I've actually, um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Um, we'll give it a shot, but uh, can you see that? There you go. So I used a pair of tweezers to bend the end of a needle. And um, I've given it this kind of this kind of angle. Can you see that? Can you see that? Sweet. And that is because when I'm doing like, when I was sewing the rings onto the flat surface of the toy, it was hard to like scrunch it up enough to get the needle through. So what I've done with this is I can like go in and under and back out without having to push the fabrics up like that. So if I say use this, normally if I was threading it, I would need to push the two fabrics up together and then push that through like that. But now, although they're on top of each other like that, I can actually, because it's curved, get that angle whilst I'm still holding here. Does that make sense? I hope so, because I can't think of a better way to <laughs> explain it, but let's uh, let's get going. But honestly, like I think that um, if I was to make another one of these, I would put the features on before sewing the whole body together and everything like that. The instructions said to do it afterwards, but um, I think I would definitely do before. Also the rings, I think I changed the shape of because they weren't quite right on the, on the pattern. But anyway, let's dive back in. Honestly, like, I love this Umbreon so much. I can't, I can't. It's so good. I've already told Ben that I'm going to give it to him, but, like, I just... It's probably because I made it as well, but I just... I love it! I love it so much! This is so fun! This is so cool! Umbreon's so cute! And I like the colour pattern design and stuff like that. Nintendo, you put this in Pokemon. Put this, make this into shiny Umbreon. Oh, look at it when its ears are forward. I might like fix its ears forward. That just makes it so cute. I know that it's a little bit wonky and I know his face is a bit weird, but that's why I love it. That's why I love him. Because his eyes are uneven and he's a little bit ugly, but he's also really cute and he sits like that. <laughs> he's so cute he's so cute i made that i made that <laughs> i made that with my own hands you can sort of see the um you know <laughs> the uh what do you call them the uh that's a toucan obviously but all the birds that basically make up the pattern of shirt that this was like you can see there's a there's a parrot there um, let's see if I can find another. Oh, on the tail, there's another parrot. <laughs> oh, and yeah, did I just show you that? Did I literally just show you that one? Yeah, I did, didn't I? <laughs> and then, like, I think that his little features are too small for you to be able to see the camo print, so, like, that's a shame. Would have been nice to get it a bit more patchwork, like a more combination of, um, combination of fabrics and stuff like that, but it's just, it's just so cool. Like, I'm so proud that I made it. And yeah, that was um, how I done it. It, you know, took a couple of days really to stitch all the bits together, um, you know, to really assemble the thing. It, but it was honestly, honestly easier than I thought it was gonna be. I had all the bits laying about and I would highly recommend giving it a go, honestly. It was really fun and now I have this little, <laughs> have this little Umbreon toy that I can enjoy forever. And I think I'm gonna make more of them, but I do think I'm uh, probably gonna go for something simpler. <laughs> Maybe, um, you know, like an in-training Digimon or something. Something with just like a round shape, something easy, something that might just be good practice. Cause I still have plenty of clothes left and everything like that. So um, yeah. I hope you guys uh, liked this video. I, if you try making your own toys, I wanna see them, because honestly, so much fun, so therapeutic to just do the stitching. And yeah, that's that. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>